I, uh, I, I can't get this thing out of my head. I, it was, uh, I think it was Peter Buck from R.E.M. and uh, Neil Young, and they were doing an interview, and they were talking about music and uh, talking about their love of vinyl and the analog sound compared to the digital sound. And uh, what a shame it was that the industry kind of pushed it aside um, and then he and then he went on to say something like uh, those people at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame better better think twice about inducting me because if I get that podium in front of those people I'm gonna have a lot to say so I hope Neil's uh, feeling feisty tonight <laughs> and uh, speaking of feisty some smart ass uh, who arranged the tables, put our table right next to Ticketmaster's table over here. So I, I predict a food fight by the end of the evening. And I would uh, recommend to the classy people like uh, Lou Reed and Laurie Anderson over there to scoot away or join in. Maybe we should all join in while we got them right here. I was talking with this guy, Joel Bernstein, who's a friend of Neil's, a comrade and co-worker, and he was uh, cataloging all of Neil's tapes uh, from over the years for a box set. And uh, there were tapes, there were eight tracks and 16 tracks and 24 tracks and cassettes, like a thousand of them. And uh, I asked, you know, are, were any of them labeled? And he, he said, yeah, they were labeled. They were labeled Wednesday night. <laughs> Monday morning, jam and B. Uh, and after it was all done, I think, I think Joel ended up cataloging them by songs, like the uh, 40 best versions of Tonight's the Night and the 65 best versions of Cortez the Killer. And uh, Neil and I were standing in this room and we were looking at all these and I, th I thought he was going to maybe take one down and we were going to play it. And he looked around and he said, I gotta get out of here. You know, I, I saw a man overwhelmed by his body of work. Um, on the way over, uh, Stone Gossard, he said his friend Lonnie called Neil's music uh, Mountain Funk. He was the king of Mountain Funk. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. He's taught us a lot as a band about uh, dignity and commitment and uh, playing in the moment and uh, when I hear you know the speeches and in inducting Janis Joplin and Frank Zappa it, I get uh, I'm just really glad he's still here uh, and, and I, 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 I'm gonna yeah <laughs> And I think I'm going to have to say that I, I don't know if there's been another artist that has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, to commemorate a career that is still as vital as he is today. Uh, some of his best songs were on his last record. Um, well, it's a real privilege to be up here uh, inducting him uh, to a, a great songwriter, a great performer, a great Canadian. Uh, welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Neil Young.
wish I had a bunch of people up here with me that could thank everybody and then I could just walk off and be cool like Dickie was. And... It's a solo thing now. Uh, just like to thank the Hall of Fame very much for uh, uh, allowing me to join this uh, amazing roster of, uh, of artists and uh, it's a very emotional moment for me now. I'd like to thank my mom. Uh, let's see. I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, my band, Crazy Horse. Stand up, you guys. I could never made it without you guys, that's for sure. Everybody knows that. And I'd like to thank my producer over the years. Many different albums, all, I think, really uh, from the heart. David Briggs. Thank you, David. And of course, there's all the people in the music industry that, uh, that, that helped me out and kind of brought me along, starting with Ahmed, who, uh, who signed us uh, to Buffalo Springfield and, uh, and then uh, believed in us. And I was telling Eddie, I said, when Ahmed walked in the session, you just got good. You got good. <laughs> you know, you got good, right? It's just happened as soon as he walked in. Yeah. So that happened, they recorded a couple where, where we were good because Ahmed was there. Some of the other ones weren't as good, but that's okay too. Uh, so thank you, Ahmed. I love you. You're the greatest. I mean, I, I, words cannot describe uh, what you did and how you believed in us and how you believed in me and how you believed in me enough to let me go from Atlantic Records because you knew that Stephen and I would would not be able to uh, work it out between us being solo artists on the same record company. So he had the, he had the wisdom to say okay to me, and I said, and I still say thank you, Ahmed. And uh, I'd like to thank Mo Austin, who stood beside me for so long. And I'd like to thank my manager, Elliot Roberts, who's around here somewhere. Thank you, Elliot. And uh, for, for making such a good deal with, with uh, Mo there and getting my house paid for. And <laughs> got me that new 48 Lincoln I wanted so much. Things have been good for me for a long time, so if I look kind of sad, it's bullshit, forget it. <laughs> I'm doing good. Something about my songs, everybody thinks I'm, you know, kind of downbeat, you know, but who was that other guy who was up here? was kind of feeling up-tempo. Up I, saw, I saw him on TV, too, and I can dig why he feels like that, because it makes him great records, but anyway, I'm just rambling on, but that's okay, because uh, I think it, uh, like I say, I got a group here with me, but you can't see him, and uh, I'm saving the best for last, so stop yelling at me, okay? I remember. That's Elliot. He's telling me who to thank and everything, you know. <laughs> Don't forget, you know. I, I was, I was, uh... He's still managing, he's managing this speech. He's... But, uh, you know, there's a lot of great music out there today, and I'm proud to be uh, a part of it, and, uh, Really happy that uh, there are so many great bands out there. And uh, I'd like to thank Kurt Cobain for giving me uh, ins inspiration to, to renew my commitments. And uh, most of all, I love you, Peggy. Okay. Thank you very much.